Thank you for tuning in to the 49th installment of Heart to Heart. I am your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and of course it's always the hour for revival. But I'm excited today about this 49th episode. We are literally one episode away from the 50th anniversary of the time we started 11 months ago. I mean, that to me is just amazing. The jubilee of 11 months ago, now getting ready to go into the 12th month. I mean, this this is just unimaginably amazing. And I'm so glad that the Father gave me heart to heart for his body. And I'm so glad of the souls that have come into the kingdom because of the broadcast and your support to this ministry has helped us continue going on with the gospel and has continued to help us bring forth this message of his saving grace. Amen. So I just wanted to thank y'all that are partners with this ministry and that are definitely watchers on the wall. I love you. God bless you. Amen. With that being said, open your Bibles to the book of Genesis, the ninth chapter, verse 13. And with that, let's pray and ask Father to bless his word. Father, we thank you that your word is already anointed. And Lord, I thank you that you're going to anoint the ears of those that need to hear this word to receive it. Thank you, Lord, you're going to set the captives free today. Thank you, Lord, that we're going to cast our bread, Father, upon the water, and it's going to come back to us as pure gold. In the name of Jesus, Lord, and the remainder of this message, the time that's given, Father, I pray that you would hasten the people's hearts to come to you and to follow after you with their whole heart. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Glory, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Genesis, the ninth chapter, verse 13, if you got your Bibles. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Actually, go to verse 12. And God said, this is a token of the covenant with which I make between me and you. And every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations, not just now, but for the generations to come, from generation to generation, from glory to glory. He said, I make a covenant with you, and not just you, I make it with the animals. I make it with everyone that's tied into your destiny. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Amen. And he said, I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and you. Uh, that, that's what I just said. I do set my bow in the cloud, and this shall be a token of a covenant between me and you and the earth. Between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall no more became, uh, become a flood to destroy all flesh. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's where we're going to start with this telecast today. Amen. Broadcast, whatever kind of cast you want to call it. Let's just cast it out by faith. Amen. Glory to God. And cast our cares on him. For he cares for us. Come on, somebody. Can you say amen tonight or this afternoon? Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. The Hebrew word for bow is translated in, or the, the, the Hebrew word for rainbow is actually translated war bow. It's the bow of war. 
And the way God set his bow in the sky, he didn't set it up like this. He set it down like this. He said, I'm not going to be at war with creation. I'm going to redeem creation. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. So when God put his war bow down like that, he's saying, I'm coming in peace. You can have peace if you come into covenant with me. He was telling them, I want a covenant. I want a relationship. I want a marriage contract with you and with me. Together, we can do this. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. So what did God do? He put the bow in the sky and hung it downward, representing... The war was over. Peace from the storm. In fact, his bow is ever before him even now. Revelation 4 and 3. Revelation 4 and 3. Isn't that amazing? What does it say? It is an emerald rainbow. It is a greenish colored rainbow. Why is it green? Because green represents everlasting life. Revelation 4, 3. His rainbow is about his throne. This time, hold on, y'all. His bow is ever before him, Revelation 4, 3. This time it's green, meaning, like he said, at the cross, it's finished. You can have eternal life if you come to him, promising those who come to him life everlasting. And on the day that the Father sends the Son to get his children, after the seven years of tribulation and the new millennial reign begins, the millennial reign of Christ, watch what happens. At the millennial reign of Christ, God will break the bow. Mm, Jesus, praise God. God will break the bow. The bow of war, according to Zechariah 9 and chapter 10, he said no more war, only eternal life for those that belong to me. He said there's there going to be no more war, there's going to be no more heartache, no more sorrow, and to prove it, God breaks the bow. He will break that bow. Zechariah 9 and chapter, chapter 9 and verse 10. God said it's over. No more war, no more sorrow, no more heartache. It's done. Do you know this is interesting? There are seven colors in a rainbow. Representing seven, completion, of the ten curtains that are in the temple when you go in between the entrance door of the outer court, the inner court, and the Holy of Holies, there's actually ten curtains. So there are seven colors of the rainbow that represent the seven of the ten curtains that are in the temple. Exodus 26, 1 through 14. That blew my mind. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Even when God came Even when God came, riding in to the life, let me, let, I, I'm sorry, y'all, my eyes are messing with me right now, and I'm trying to read this notes right here. Let me tell you this. Even when God, 
showed up riding in on a storm. Lord Jesus, hallelujah, Holy Ghost, glory to God, amen. He came riding in on a storm to minister to a prophet because the man was an out-of-work priest. Ezekiel the prophet, an out-of-work priest, sitting down and being recognized among the marginalized people that they were beginning to worship the Lord and dip in their hands seven times a day in the waters by the river of Chabar, which was actually an irrigation system that ran from Zion to Babylon. Check this out, y'all. God came to an out-of-work priest and made him a prophet. He showed up with his bow, Ezekiel 128. He showed up with covenant. He showed up saying, I've, I've come to give you peace. He said, I've come to give you peace. You've been in war. You've been in Babylon. You are stuck, it seems. But I've come to free you from that Babylonian mindset that the enemy's trying to put on you. Ezekiel 1 and 28, when God shows up, his bow is around him. God is a man of war, the Bible says. And if you hold your peace, God will fight for you. But you know what's interesting? God, according to the missing books, messed with the enemy. <laughs> and what I mean by messed with him, he made him believe what he wanted to believe. He let him believe what he wanted to believe. Babel, they shot the arrows up in the Tower of Babel. And when they shot the arrows up into the Tower of Babel, According to the missing books of the Bible, God allowed them to see blood coming down on the air, meaning they thought they shot God. So now they're going to build the, the, the temple and go up there. They're going to build this stairway to heaven. But when they was on this stairway to heaven, they was on the highway to hell. Jesus, hallelujah, Holy Ghost, glory to God, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Ezekiel 128, God keeps his promises. Watch this. Do you know when they thought they had destroyed God at the Tower of Babel, God sent destruction to the city? and confuse their languages so they couldn't do what they proposed to do. Watch this. I'm almost done, y'all. We have done the same with the Tower of Babel. We have done the same as them. What do I mean? We've shot an arrow up to God because the way the bow is facing. Let me tell you something, y'all. If you look at the rainbow that they got on their shirts and and the way they are worshiping, I'm going to say it like that, worshiping gay pride. Let me tell you what's happening. They're using an image of God's covenant as a slap in the face to the king. They are shooting a bow up into heaven. They are shooting an arrow at God, declaring war with him who sits in the heavens. That's what the Lord showed me. Now watch this. The symbol of God's covenant is also a symbol of their own destruction. What do I mean by that? He said, I will not flood the earth again with water. But how does he destroy the earth in Revelation chapter, in the book of Revelation? How does he destroy the earth with fire? 
First time it was with water. This time it's with fire. They're wearing a symbol of their own destruction. And they think they're cute. They think they got it together. But really they don't even know that they are wearing an image of destruction. Saying we are we are going to do our own thing. And they're shooting these arrows up to God. And they think that they got away with it. They think just like with Babylon that God is. Well, They think with the Tower of Babel that God is. Uh, not a threat to them is what they think. But they're about to find out that the one who allowed them to see one thing is getting ready to do another upon them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He will set a trap for his enemy. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Really, what is going on in the world today with this gay pride stuff and everything? Let me tell you, it's declaring war against the Most High. Because the way they got the arrow, the way they got the bow, they got the bow shooting directly. My God in heaven. They got it shooting toward God. But you know what? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God of pulling down of strongholds. And not just that, my friends. The hour is coming and is now here when you will see God begin to burn the arrows of iniquity. How? Because God is going to shoot an arrow too. See, we've shot. America has shot arrows to God. What's going to happen? God's going to return the favor and he's going to shoot an arrow back. It's called the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. You think you got arrows? Let me tell you something. Those of you that serve the devil, let me tell you about your boss. All right? Let me tell you about how sorry he is, how dumb he is. He ain't even got arrows. He's got darts. He's got little things. Boom, 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 boom. He ain't got nothing. But my God, the God of war, a man of war, has got all victory and power in his hands. Let me tell you something. If you look at the dollar bill and you look at the back of your dollar bill, it is a statement. And it's saying with the words in Greek, or Latin I think it is, it is saying... Out of many, one, a one world order, there's the eye of Ra on the statue of the uh, pyramid. And, and what it is, is saying, it is Satan actually making a declaration, a covenant. Saying, I, Lucifer, is what he's saying on the back of your dollar bill. He's saying, I, Lucifer, uh, uh, announce the conception of a one world order. That's what he's saying. That's on the back of your dollar bill. And that's only on one side. Then you got the bird on the other side who is actually not even an eagle. It's a phoenix that rises mytholo mythologically through the ashes after America's burned up. That is what it does. That's the, uh, the phoenix is a mythical bird that rises from the ashes after being burned to pieces. Watch this now, y'all. It says, out of many one, anurus adura seclorum. Out of many one. Watch this now. The peace, which should be in the right hand, is in the left. And the hand that represents authority has war in it. The arrow is not in the hand of the left, but it, it's a right-wing dictatorship. It's a right-wing authority. That's what it's saying. This is a right-wing. And people don't even know that this is on the back of their dollar bill. Our designers for the dollar bill, let me tell you about them. They were satanic worshipers. The ones that designed the seals for the dollar bills were, were demonic. 
They were Masonic leaders. I'm telling you something. This world is playing around with God and they're about to find out that the arrows, the arrows that they keep pointing up to him are getting ready to fall back down and hit them. God is a God of love, yes, but he's also a man of war. And he will not allow sin to continue on. He will destroy sin by allowing sin to destroy itself. Amen. Glory to God. If you're watching me and you're saying, Brother HR, I want to be saved from the war that's coming, just like Noah was, because this is the days of Noah. Brother HR, I want to know the God of peace. I want to know the God of Noah. If you want to know Jesus, all things were created by him. Without him, nothing was created that was created. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. If you want to know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and you know that there's a spiritual war going on inside of you, and you want God to lay that bow down instead of bringing it up, you want God to lay it down. You, you're saying, Lord, just... If you'll take this war from me, this war that's raging on the inside away, I'll serve you. If that's you, pray this prayer of me. Dear Jesus, I come to you a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross, that God the Father raised you from the dead, and I am saved. Lord Jesus, wash me, cleanse me, fill me with your precious Holy Spirit, that I might make heaven my home. In Jesus' name, Amen, amen, and amen. Glory, hallelujah. I love you. God bless you. If you prayed that prayer with me, write to me, hourforrevival at yahoo.com. I want to send you out a certificate of sonship in the name of Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Father, thank you for the 49th episode of Heart to Heart. I love you all. Oh, God bless you. I love you, Austin. God bless you, my brother. Tayanja, God bless you as well. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Canaan Norris, God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. I love y'all. God bless you. I'll see you in the next meeting or in there in heaven. I pray healing. I pray deliverance. I pray that Jesus would fill you with the Holy Ghost and with fire in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. I love you. God bless. Bye-bye.